Grace, mercy, and peace to God, our Father, and our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon this evening is based on a part of the gospel reading out of Mark 9, um, especially this part. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the uncomfortable fire. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell. For the worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. Jesus seems to think that sin is a big deal. It's such a big deal that you should be ready to cut off any part of your body which causes you to do it. And he says that if any of us cause somebody else to do it, somebody else to fall into sin, especially a little one, as he says, then it's such a big deal that we should tie a millstone around our neck and jump into the sea and die, just so that we don't cause somebody else to sin. It's hard to overstate how strongly Jesus feels about it. Sin matters. It's, not, it's something that he wants us to take very seriously. But we don't, really, do we? It's not very serious to us. Sin is not something we tend to think much about at all. In fact, I would go so far to say that sin doesn't have much meaning for us outside of these walls. I mean, we talk about sin in church sometimes, but never quite fits any other place in our lives. We don't go bowling and talk about sin. It's probably not something that comes up on the golf course. Schools don't speak about sin. It's probably not water cooler conversation at the office. So Jesus says it's a really big deal. And we like to pretend it doesn't really exist. And I think I know why that is. Sin points to something outside of us. It makes us think of a greater good that stands above us, a greater good which tells us how we are to live our lives, how we are to treat those around us, even how we are to think about other people. And we don't like that sort of thing. We don't like the idea of anybody telling me what I can and can't do with my body. What I can and can't do with my mind. What I can and can't do with my daily interactions. We don't want anyone or anything having that kind of control over us. So we don't let them. We, we build a wall around us. We shut ourselves off from that kind of influence. We convince ourselves that no one can have any say over what I do or how I think. Now, it's not like we don't have sin anymore. Instead, so we kind of change it to fit the things that we do care about. So to us, sin is not living up to your potential. Sin is letting yourself down in some situations. Sin is not handling a, a situation or relationship the way that you want to. But you see that all of us make you the standard of what's good or bad. When we close ourselves off like this, when we wall ourselves off so that nothing can affect us that we don't want to affect us, we also close out God. We close ourselves off from the idea of sin because we think we can be happier without that outside influence of our Lord. But time out. Maybe, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Maybe... What is, maybe we need to answer the question, what is sin actually? We tend to think of biblical sin as the big ones. You know, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal. That doesn't quite explain it all the way. Sin in the Bible means something like this, to miss the mark. Like you're at the gun range and you miss the bullseye. Except it's more than that. Because you can get good at shooting at the target, at the gun range. You can learn to shoot better. 
It's, it's more like this. God gives us so many great gifts. These, all these wonderful gifts of the kingdom. He gives us these things because he wants us to have them. And we miss the mark by chasing after other things. We chase after bad substitutes. Like in the first commandment, you shall have no other gods. He gives us the gift of himself. He wants us to have himself. He says don't have other gods because he wants us to have him. And he wants to be the one we look to for everything that we need. And if we go after chasing after some other god, we, we take our eyes off of him. Whether it's towards money or sex or health or power or control or whatever, they're not the true God. And they'll let us down. And he doesn't want us to be let down. Or the fifth commandment, you should not murder. God gives us the gift of a body. And he gives your neighbor a body. And he says, don't hurt these things. Don't try to damage them because I want you to enjoy those bodies, what they can do, because I made them for you. Or the fourth commandment, which gives us the gift of a family. He doesn't want us to be alone. And so when we break those things, when we turn our back on God and say, I don't like what you gave me, Lord. I can do it better myself, God. That's sin. That's missing the mark. That's seeing what God has given you and aiming for a different target. Because sin is it, sin because you are breaking the gifts that God gave to you. Sin is looking inside yourself for the things that you think you want and you need, even if it hurts those around you. And it does. Being self-serving always <coughs> hurts those around you. Looking to yourself for things that God has already freely given to us and spits in the face of God who gave them to you. And sin is not just the big stuff. It's not just murder or assault. It's not just stealing from the register at work. Paul says in Romans 3, he says, All have sinned and fall short to the glory of God. Not just those who didn't commit one of the big ones. Everybody. Everyone has missed the mark. John says that if you say you have no sin, you're lying to yourself. Sin is mentioned hundreds of times throughout the scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, the whole thing. Sin is a big deal. And God teaches us about sin because we, we need to recognize that sin makes us less than he wants us to be. It separates us from what God would have for us. And if we remain in our sin, then we remain alone forever. But that's what sin does. It keeps us from relationships. It breaks relationships. It cuts us off from those whom God would have be with us. God wants us to recognize our sin so that we can repent of it, to turn our back on it and turn toward Jesus, even if it hurts, even if it costs us money or it's inconvenient. So we don't like to talk about sin because we don't like to open ourselves up to be vulnerable. To, 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 to look to be vulnerable to forces that are outside of us. So we build our wall and we close ourselves off. We all do this. All kinds of examples come to mind. The name of closing ourselves off from acknowledging sin, we engage in certain activities outside of marriage. It's so common we don't even, talk, we don't even hide it. We talk about it openly as if it's not even a problem. But when we do this, we take God's gift of family, we pervert it into something else, something less stable, less secure, less healthy. And, and we think we've chosen the better way. When we, in the name of closing ourselves off to, so we don't have to acknowledge sin, we, we close ourselves off from the word of God. Pretending we can think whatever we want about the God who created us. With the result that we may be the most Ill, biblically illiterate generation since long before the printing press was invented. Because we think that it doesn't matter what's in that book, that we are somehow above it in judgment of it, that it doesn't affect us. I could go on. But hear what Jesus says. If there is something causing you to sin, get rid of it. Separate yourself from it. 
It's not worth separating yourself from God over whatever it is. If you're committing adultery, stop. Repent. Your action, your behavior is causing someone else to sin. Stop. Repent of it. Receive Jesus' forgiveness and don't do it anymore. Because there is forgiveness. Jesus stands ready and eager to forgive. There is no forgiveness where there is no repentance. And repentance means to turn away from sin. The, the fruit of repentance is contrition. We feel sorrow over our sin and what it has done with our relationship with God and, and with others. Jesus' readiness to forgive is, is not licensed to sin all the more. A person who sins because Jesus will forgive anyway is an unbeliever. First John says, would say that you're lying to yourself if you think you don't have any sin. So you sin and God will forgive you anyway, so it's okay. When Jesus was talking to the woman caught in adultery, he told her to go and sin no more. You know, in some sense, I think he meant it. Turn away from your sin. Walk in the light as he is in the light. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all your sin. So confess your sin. Cut it out of your life by any means possible and receive his forgiveness. He gave his body and his blood on the cross to forgive you your sins. And here tonight, he gives that same body and blood to you to cover your sin. To take your sin away. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding and keep our hearts and our minds in one true faith until life everlasting. Amen. We rise to the opposite.